Good morning, guys. I just wanted to come on this morning and um, share what God has put up on my heart. Um, what I did this morning was I just opened the Bible and I said, Lord, I'm just going to open it up. And I do this often, all the time, actually. And God had taken me to Daniel, the fourth chapter. And um, this is an a dream that Nebuchadnezzar has about a tree but as I'm starting to read um, it's talking about signs and it's talking about wonders we all know that Hurricane Milton is making landfall and it's going to come in as a very fierce fierce storm and let's remember those people in prayer that live down there for peace and for comfort as God can give them that peace and comfort Let's pray that those that are able to evacuate are evacuated. Let's pray that people can just have peace through this whole situation. This is a terrible storm, but all things are from the Lord. God sends signs and he sends wonders. Jesus said that in the last days there would be perilous times, earthquakes in diverse places. Um, so... God uses all things that we see. Everything that we see is God. God is in it, guys. So there is always a purpose and a plan. Um, and God does not do anything for evil, but his intention is always good. Amen. And a lot of times there's things that have to happen in our lives. Um, disasters or calamities have to happen. For God to get the attention of the people to draw their hearts back close to him. Amen. But let's remember those people in prayer. Lift those people up in prayer. In Daniel, the fourth chapter, I want to share what God has put up on my heart this morning. It says, Nebuchadnezzar the king, unto all people, this is chapter four, nations and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God hath wrought toward me. How great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. Though That is a sign. That hurricane is a sign from God. It's a mystery from God. But if we draw close to him, we know that through any storm or through any trial or any affliction, that God is greater. God is our strength. Amen. Hallelujah. The kingdom is an, his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in mine house and flourishing in my palace, and I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore made I a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. Guys, these magicians, these astrologers, these sorcerers could not reveal this dream to him. Only Daniel was able to reveal it to him because Daniel's heart was living by faith, was drawn nigh to God, and only God can reveal the deep things to us. This hurricane... We need to seek God for wisdom and for knowledge. This is a sign. We know there's going to be signs in the last days. Jesus said there would be signs. Um, these are birth pangs that are taking place. God's grace is for you today. The birth pangs are not against you. They're for you and they're for you to draw nigh to God. Like Daniel's heart had draw, was drawn nigh to God. That through whatever the situation, he could ask God. And the Bible says, ask you will receive. I believe that God is letting us know that the hourglass is starting to run out, that today is the day of salvation, to sound the trumpet and to be a watchman over the house of Israel, to be good shepherds, to listen to the good shepherd's voice. Don't listen to the false prophets like these astrologers, these magicians, and these sorcerers, because what comes out of their mouth is just vanity. It means nothing because it's not seasoned with grace. It's not seasoned with mercy. It's not seasoned with the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. And if it's not seasoned with Jesus, it cannot reveal anything to you. 
Paul many times writes in Scripture and he says, Receive not the grace of God in vain. Receive it as you're rooted and grounded in love of the abiding word, the continuing word, the enduring word, the everlasting word. God's kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Amen is what it says. Verse number three of chapter four. How great are his signs. They are great. How mighty are his wonders. They are mighty. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. The word of the Lord endures forever. The flesh is just as the grass and the glory of the flesh is like the flower that fades away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. Jesus will endure forever. He's the word that has made flesh, that dwelt among us, that saved us, that shed his blood for us. For we now have forgiveness of sin, remission of sin, because of the power of the blood of the Lamb. Oh, glory to God. His kingdom is everlasting. God is so good. Amen. Verse number seven, then came in the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, the soothsayers, and I told the dream before them, but they did not make it known unto me the interpretation thereof. But at the last, Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, and in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. There is only one Holy Spirit. There's only one God. There's only one baptism. There's only one Lord. There's only one faith. Amen. Many members, yes, but we're all connected to the head, which is one Lord, Jesus Christ, one Holy Spirit, who has many functions. Amen. Daniel had the function where he was given the gift of interpreting dreams. Amen. In whom is the spirit of the holy gods? And before him I told the dream, saying, O Belteshazzar, master of, of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. Amen. Look upon the inside, not on the outside. The old man is dead. And if you can see the new man living on the inside, Jesus said that man is pure in heart. He's been forgiven. He's standing upright. He's rooted and grounded in the knowledge and the wisdom of God. And God is revealing to him his heart because there's a relationship there. What's going on? There are signs and wonders going on all around us, guys. But if we stay strong in the eyes of God, in the lens of God, God will reveal to us the season that we are in. We are in a season to sound the trumpet and to warn people that judgment is coming, but the grace of God is for you today. That you can be judged according to goodness, according to the Lamb of God, which is eternal life, an eternal kingdom, an everlasting kingdom. You don't have to reap the wrath of God, which is eternal separation from God, eternal death putting to death and mortifying your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, lavishness, anger, malice, and wrath, all those things, they are not of the Father. For the lust of the eye, the lust of the world, and the pride of life is not of God. For the world is enmity with God. For Jesus said, His kingdom is not of this kingdom, for His kingdom is from above. For we seek Christ in heavenly places. Daniel was seeking Him in his heart. And his heart was pure and it was drawn nigh to God, walking by faith. And faith is able to reveal the deep things of God. It's able to move mountains with just a little bit of a mustard seed's faith. Jesus said, you can do the impossible because it's God that is for you. And God has drawn nigh to you and God is doing the work. For it is not I that live, but it is Christ Jesus that liveth within me. Amen. What is going on over there is, a, is terrible. God forbid that that ever happens. But God is in control and God knows what he's doing. Let's pray for those people. Most importantly, that they know and have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That they grab hold of the free gift of grace. Embrace it and get rooted and grounded in the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. I love you guys. And may the grace of God be with you.